The king may have been unaware of the actions in the reach, but the sea snake was not. Little could pass by his ear without his knowledge and his interest, and a dragon rider from the Manda was certainly not something he would ignore. Yet this Lords of Cliffs High did not impress Corlys, well, not yet at least. The sea snake had worked with the rogue prince. His son rode upon the back of Sea Smoke, and his daughter upon the back of Vega. He knew dragons all too well. But where they had shown that they could control their dragons, it almost appeared as if it was the dragon who controlled Serwyn. It was an aggressive beast, ridden by a now aggressive man. And in combat, it appeared it was the dragon who took the front, forging this path ahead. On truth, Corlys couldn't understand how no one had raised an objection to him. Hundreds had been burned in the Shield Isles. The heir to one isle had been burned to ashes right before his father, yet no one had stepped in. Though, of course, who would step in to stop a dragon? Corlys was correct in thinking that Sir Wynne would be better served as an ally than a foe. But Corlys still believed himself above stature to the Shieldman still serving as the Targaryen's closest ally. Of such, he did not open contact with Serwyn, and instead waited for Serwyn to open contact with him. Corlys had a plan. He allowed part of his trade to arrive in the ports of Cliffs High, his massive fleets carrying great goods and wares for sales on these islands, things they had never seen before. The locals were astonished by such goods, and they sold well. But for Serwyn, and implanted the thought in his mind of making deals with the sea snake. Corlys had laid the blade, and Daron had bitten it. A week later, on the back of Sapphire, Serwyn began to make a journey across the realm. What would have been a month-long journey by carriage began to race past, with Serwyn only taking a small stop in Templeton for a night's rest. In less than two days, he had flown across the entire realm to arrive on the Isle of Driftmark, and announced an attempt to make Harley with the Sea Snake, to offer him the greatest thing he could. Well, he did not have wealth, no, but he did have the hand of his young son and heir, a dragon-bonded boy with high ambitions, a perfect match for the young Eleanor Valarian, a girl whose young mind and beauty had been known across the realm, a Valyrian match for his dragon-riding son. Yet the response of Corley so most stunned Serwyn. The Sea Snake was not eager for this union as he had hoped, and instead told Serwyn that his daughter was to be married of a man of her stature and her prose, a married in a grand ceremony in mighty halls. Serwyn felt enraged. Corley had not said as such in open words, but it was clearly the intention of his words. He was mocking Serwyn, mocking House Daron, mocking his ambition. Yet perhaps he was right to do so. He was an upstart, a house of no renown asking for the hand of Valyrian blood. It was foolish, perhaps, but to Serwyn, he saw this as a path to legitimise him. It was then Corlys twisted his ever so carefully laid dagger and laid plans in Serwyn's mind. He told Serwyn he would not agree to a match for his daughter until her tenth name day, when she was only nine. A year. Serwyn had a year to prove himself worthy. To make friends with the Sea Snake, to prove himself more than just a man lucky enough to bond with a dragon. To earn coins to pay for some grand ceremony. Serwyn looked at the Sea Snake and felt a new determination grow within himself. Then I shall see you in a year, Lord Valerian, he said with a smile growing upon his face. As he returned to Dragonback, a passion building inside himself. He could see the path, the path towards renown and recognition. And as he flew away, a back sapphire, he felt great determination. Yet when Lord Corlys saw sapphire disappear over the horizon, he could only smile. Hello guys and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, a game of thrones where we are continuing as Lord Sterwin the Stout of House Daron. Uh, we are a vassal to a very young liege lord here in the Reach after the 
untimely death of Sir Ga- of uh, Lord Paramount Gormon, slain by Sir Guile in the uh, Reach Civil War. We experienced our session, which sadly we couldn't be a part of as we weren't a duke. But that's changing now, we are now a duke. We could definitely get involved in that sort of stuff in the future. Right, are there factions against my lead? No, there are not. That's good. So, a offer proposed, and an offer I think well met, of marriage with the sea snake. Of course, he's a man very old and may not be long for this world, but um, the fact that Lena is a captain I find very fun, by the way. But um, with Corliss still being here, siding with him, getting in his good terms. We'll also get some good touch with Lenor. So a marriage with Eleanor here. I mean, it just seems to make sense. However, we... Do I have to offer it to him? Yes, I do. Uh, so if we offer... Lionel. Mm -hmm. None found. That is interesting. Not quite sure why that is. Oh no, I remember why. Uh, she might be below. Uh, the mod has a age in which characters are available for marriage. I believe it is 10. So I believe her being 9 may mean that she cannot yet be betrothed. But when when she is 10, we will make it off. In fact, when is she 10? Just so we can double check that that's the case. Also, it may be interesting to keeping an eye on the Princess Rhaenyra and her children. Uh, Viserys himself, of course, plenty of kids of his own, has not yet made any declaration about them, though Rhaenyra still remains the heir, in his eyes, which is more than fair enough. So her birthday is... Oh, uh, a mirish creator of curiosities, a mirish inventor has been travelling Westeros, stopping in my domain at Grimston today. The array of creations that he has are on display at the Stenishing, though my son Unwin is not going to spend his days constructing oddities, such creative thinking and understanding could benefit him when he comes into his own as a ruler. Perhaps I could convince him to... Interesting. It would cost a hundred coin. That'd be a lot. And it would maybe increase his learning. I mean, his learning's not great in the first place. I don't know. I don't think there's much we can get from it. Getting wise man as a trait would be good, but there's only a 20% chance. And there's even a 24% chance it doesn't even increase his learning. So, I don't think it's worth it. For Unwin. I mean, he's not even the heir. He's, he's second in line. So, but I don't think I could arrange marriage on when can I? Yeah, there we go. So it's it's when they're ten, they're available to. When is her birthday? You know, to see birthdays anymore. No, there we go. Ninth of the twelfth moon. Okay, we're not that far off then. Well, we'll go check on her then. Uh, curse. There's a cursed children. My son Lionel and his compatriot Teresa were caught red-handed, having snuck into the armory. She'd hurt herself, but fortunately Lionel ran outside and grabbed the nearest adult, admitting everything they'd done. Honest or arbitrary? Ooh. Honesty isn't that bad, it just means he's going to be awful at intrigue, which was never going to be a strong point anyway. I mean, he's looking like an incredible steward to be only 13 and already with 15 stewardship, so, I mean, that's going to be more than fine for us. And of course he has his little dragon, a Gekagon, that uh, he hatched from his dragon egg at the end of last session. I have been told that we can actually... Oh, I'm his captain of the household guards. That's actually a great honour. I mean, it makes sense with a really good prowess. Uh, I have been told that we can actually try and get uh, reignite this egg. Oh, well, look at that in a second, my little daughter. To get this egg working again. But obviously, that's going to be some effort to make that happen. The harbors of bazaars of the far and white echo of both exhilaration and dread. That a mere child, my daughter Jane, has hatched a beast that will grow so powerful. However she managed it, Jane has named her new grey hatchling Valex. I don't imagine she named it at one years old, unless Valex is what 
Valerian baby goo goo sound like. Although, obviously, not actually Valerian shieldman. But there we go. The only one who failed so far was uh, Unwin. Although, he does have his opal dragon egg. Ooh. Ufor accepts a passage of wailing voice from the seven pointed star. Ufor has been a proven member of the clergy. As such, he must be placed under clerical custody. Uh, don't trip on your way out, buddy. Whoops, what a shame. But now I have two young dragons. Our Valix is like pure white. And then we have a bond with uh, Hegagon, which is more of a, a grey. Of course, both children of Sapphire, now 36 years old. Still growing in the size and power. I wonder if she'll have another clutch. Either way, she's looking a proper beautiful creature. I mean, I could never be upset at a dear Sapphire. Sapphire is basically everything to us. I do wonder if I need a dragon pet to keep uh, Sapphire from flying away, or if Sapphire will naturally stay where we are. Like, does Dragonstone have a dragon pit? No, it has to have the dragon mont, though. It acts as a natural dragon pit. So does King's Landing have a dragon pit, then? Um, Not that I can see one, unless it's a specific building in one of the... Yes, it is, actually. There you go. Uh, the dragon pit in the Lordship. This building acts as a dragon pit, which allows a country holder to store dragons. However, the dragons in turn will suffer health and growth penalties. Of course, this was uh, built after deceptive remembrance by Magor the First and was completing the reign of King Jairus. Magor obviously burnt down deceptive remembrance, or rather, I guess, him, him and his uh, and his dear mother sort of destroyed every remaining thing as a part of it, <laughs> just completely decimating uh, the Scepter from Remembrance and killing those inside, and then the Dragon Mont was built on top of it. It does make me wonder how we'd be able to get one. This, it's a Dragon Pit different because it's natural. Yeah, it will say, Dragon's Not Within will suffer considerably less than a Dragon in an artificial Dragon Pit, which is good because uh, Dragons and Dragonstone did obviously grow far more freely. Question's going to be can we build a dragon pit? Not that I see. I don't see the ability to build one. Maybe there's an event for it? Or maybe we just one day have to steal King's Landing in order to get it. <laughs> uh, let's ride on Sapphire. Sapphire takes flight, and in a few flaps of her wings we are both close to the sky. I leave behind me the heavy burden of my title. I let go of all responsibilities for a moment. To rise above it all, and to feel the cares of the winds, the caress of the wind and the kiss of the sun. Where are the moments when I can completely let myself go and live fully in the present? Which makes this flight all the more exhilarating. Sapphire begins to twirl, and after a few... Moments of letting off steam, I command us to rise again and again and again. We reach the highest peak of the clouds. I close my eyes, extending my arms to their fullest, and here, far from everything, is like a new youth. Sapphire's roar makes me understand that she is also delighted with the special time we are sharing. Uh, let's let's do, get some dragon training in. Because we definitely need that. And we can also pet nose wise. Uh, can, let's take a look at the artifacts mountain. Mountain. Market. This would be fantastic if I had any money whatsoever. This is actually a pretty good thing to actually be sold. Become a dragon rider house. Interesting. So if I if I keep going, like I, I get grandkids or I get more children, as if five of us can ride dragons, we can use become dragon rider house. Maybe that might let us build a dragon pit. I'm not sure. I've never... I know. I'm, I'm new to this. This is all very new to me and I'm very excited about it. I, I want to learn this through the game. I don't want to search all of these things up. I wonder if um, the Valarians have the that trait. Because they actually shouldn't. Because obviously they don't have that many... This is their first generation of Dragon Riders. And obviously Corliss himself isn't a Dragon Rider. It's only... Um, 
Lena on Sea Smoke and uh, Lena on Vega. God, she is scarred, disfigured, pregnant. No idea how that's going to go for it. They actually had a male heir. Damon has a son, Ares. And he's, is he, yeah, he's still down here. He went back. So he basically gave up his title, went here, and then came back. It makes you wonder if he's going to go on the second stepstone war to reconquer it all again. Something to keep in mind. There we go. Now we can make a marriage with Elnor, with our son, Daron. He would not accept, because he doesn't like me, and, and, and Elena is dear to him. Let's sway him, then. Do what we can to get him on our side. Send him a poem, maybe? Is there one I can send that won't be mocked? No, he'd mock everything I sent him. <laughs> That's not good. Didn't even consider that he would say no, but no, Ashen Burst makes sense. We don't have any ties with him. And he's a far more powerful man than we are. Let's check. Does uh, Lainor have any kids yet? Quote unquote, his kids. No, he does not. I wonder why. And Rhaenyra in this timeline is married to Makar, her brother. I suppose I could. Solve some issues of uh, Dance of Dragons. Or at least you'd hope it would. You never know. Following the death sentence of a lowly thief, I asked my son Unwin what he found. He responded the sentence was far too harsh for such a small crime. Yeah, again, just. Just curious boy. Whereas my, my son Lionel is honest, diligent, humble. Like, this is a really interesting character. I, I'm, I would look forward to playing him. Although I would hope we get a long time as Sirwin. Because I don't even know what's going to happen with Sapphire when we die. What's more interesting is that this is that an authoritative, arrogant, sadistic man is raising pretty pretty good children. It's as if he's raising them to not be him. Oh, we could go to Honeyholt for a grand tournament. You know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's go. Nothing wrong with Honeyholt. Of course, the only problem for me is, uh, is the sort of constant uh, payment I have to make for experienced captains, just because I don't want to take any risk on these uh, rivers. Do I want to take a 40-year-old woman as my paramour? paramour? Alas, I cannot love so freely. We're not, we're not like Dawn, where they can have a hundred paramours and nobody cares. Uh, I'm not going to take the risk of getting ill. Ooh. Wait, Ultric has a bigger chance of winning than me? <laughs> With awful prowess, too. <laughs> Let's try and mediate them. Nope, he hated it. Okay. So, board game and archery. Probably won't do good in a board game. and We're actually not that good in archer. Damn. Yeah, we're all we're all um, uh, combat. Still worth a try to ride us. Let's get to the tourney ground, see if we can uh, at least get in the tournament. He's never been in a tournament, so this is a good time to start getting our our name known throughout the reach. I mean, I think most people would want to <laughs> would want to know the guy who's able to ride on Dragonback. Usually, a guy worth knowing in your region. My wet nurse, just, did they die or did they just give up on being a wet nurse? Can visit again in a couple days. Okay, hopefully this will get us. Uh, let's get the moderate increase. Yeah, there we go, we'll qualify. Now why has she left my service? Because I still have a bunch of kids. So I might need to... Send for, I don't have the call for wetness, do I? 
under there we go. Search for wet nurse. Hopefully it won't be too expensive because that would be a problem for us. We can't imagine us being able to afford the wet nurse in truth. It's why I almost sort of want to get a win here. Just so we can get some money in. Okay, there we go. 35. I'm, I'll pay 35. I was, hoping, I was worried it would be like 50 gold and then that would just be an unmanageable cost for us. Artisans, think camp temple. Let's go to the village. Get a bit of stress off. I'm sort of I want I want to look at the region and see who would be worth knowing. Ocean Road or Darstone, I feel like are the obvious. If we were to expand, these are where we'd continue expansion. Although Ocean Road's a lot more powerful than Darstone. I guess that's both a, a positive and a negative for us. Uh, we're not going to place a bet because I don't think we win. Interesting. So I can try and sabotage. Let's try with Sir Donald. Okay, good. Uh, the table flips with an angry fork. Amos mood is, uh, suddenly uh, turned suddenly several moves ago as he realized a simple mistake and all but decided the game in my favor. Yes, yes, you win, Lord Sirwin. Happy. Pick them up. I need to make my last move. Come on, let's go back a few moves. Ooh, interesting, yeah. I'm just gonna mock him. Like, come on. Oh, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe, maybe giving him a second chance is, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have given him a second chance, I think. I should have, uh, I thought, cause, oh, it might help me in the whole tournament altogether if I can like get extra practice on beating his ass. But I think it just cost me the tournament. Whoops. Oh well, we'll get him on archery. <laughs> he, he, he was never, um, he was never made for the. He never had the makings of a varsity chess player. That's all I'll say. Whoops. But yeah, the, it would be better to own this, like, because it's definitely a richer region than Darston. Although all the reach is quite rich. But we need, we need outside help to get them. But we, we have a chance of getting outside help through if we can marry it off Unwin. To the right person. Oh, I could have gained some money off that, damn it. I'm on course to qualify. Am I? Yes, I am. Good. Um, let's go. I still want to go to the Tony Grounds just to be. Oh, getting a bit of dread. I'm actually okay with that. I love dread. We're not like the Westerlands who actually, for some reason, have analysis uh, for it. Prince Maycar takes to the skies. Through Mance's Wimpers of a declaration of note. Maker has managed to capture and claim the Blue Beast Dreamfire. Oh, at the age of 14. That's a terrifying pair, really. Oh, and he's raised by Damon. That's so interesting. A Maker not raised by Otto, but, you know, an heir actually raised by Damon and married to Rhaenyra. Who's actually at this turning. Oh, we, this is, would be our chance to meet Rhaenyra for the first time, then. Maybe we, we can do the... Um, is, there the is it Tavern? That's, no, that just reduces rest. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if we can meet someone. Oh. My knight Leo's recent absences have not gone unnoticed, nor the many servants turned away from his door. At the attorney's request, I enter his lodgings. All the world knows I am a great and worthy knight, growls he, and so without highborn attendants and grand gifts from my liege, I must refuse to compete. My attending uh, the contest in poverty would dishonor us both. Oh, shut, shut the hell up. 14 prowess and he's acting like that. Get the hell out of here. Leave my service. How pathetic. If we can get unwin a good marriage, we'll be in a good spot. Yeah, this would be a good chance to get to know Rhaenyra. The realm's delight. Send her a poem. No, she'd hate a poem as well. Oh, and Corliss is here too. I assume he still wouldn't want to arrange a marriage, would he? No. He'd never make a matrimonial. If I make it a grand wedding, he would. But that's going to be an expensive thing. I don't know, but there's time. 
It'll be six years. Let's do it. Let's take the. We're going to take the odds. I'll even take out a loan just to pay for it. But I think a wedding of, of those two should be a grand wedding anyway, if we're being frank. Oh, I've got my fame up as well. And by that point, I'm hoping in the next six years we're going to start getting our gold up a bit. Well, Prince Maelor is also taken to the sky. On the back of the orange beast Sarnor. Oh. A child of Dreamfire. The tragedy at the butts. I step up to the line, pulling an arrow from the barrel, and carefully draw my bow. At that very moment, I commit, loosening a grip, a figure suddenly emerges from behind the butt. The shot flies true straight towards them. Gasp rises from the spectators after an eternity. The form keels over, groaning. The valet soon confirms the worst. The peasant is dead. No points for that arrow. Um. Shit. Popular dismay in the Lord's Perry Gate. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. <laughs> it, it, it's just peasant style all the time in archery contests. Let's not worry about it. What we should say is that I was actually incredibly accurate. Ooh. So I can get one that will decrease Sir Garrett's score and increase mine slightly. Or one that would give me 9 experience in bow with Husted Lear. How much do I need per level anyway? 30. Yeah, I'm, I'm well off getting a, a good one in bow. Uh, let's... Go for this one. So Garrett's score decreases moderately. Uh, yeah, what's my go yet? I didn't have my go. Don't worry about it. She lost 20 gold. God damn it. Dusk begins to draw in slowly but steadily as the competition continues. The stepping of strings, a staccato rhythm. Or staccato rhythm. I don't know. I'm... I don't know every word ever, okay? I lean in on my boat, considering the path this contest has taken so far, such as when the wind began to blow strongly, forcing me to improvise. The competition begins to draw to a close, as arrows continue to fly into and past the bats. If I'm to make any impact on my proceeds from here, I must act now. Let's take the chance. I am one with my bow. Lionel's chased? He's very heavenly, but I don't know if that's going to be a great trait. Oh, or I could give him lustful. Oh, dear. Why would I get... I feel like I shouldn't get stressed from that. I feel like that's exactly what I would tell him. So if we think about it, this is going to give us minus 50, minus a do scheme. But plus two learning. He's awful. He's absolutely awful at intrigue. My dear boy. I said we're going to give him chase just because I think that's going to be a more interesting character. This guy's going to be a really interesting character to play as, I think. Ooh, my score increased greatly. I have a chance here. A very low chance. I don't think I'm winning this, but we have a chance. Oh, I was second! Second to Sir Noho. Coming in a close second, Lord Sirwin. And that leaves the victor Sir Alistor. Sir Alistor won. Do I get anything for second place? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, I get experience, at least, one would hope, right? For Stidlia. No? Maybe I get it at the end. Oh, I think I do get it at the end. They got a prize brooch. Oh, wow! Oh, it would have been so good to win and get that. That's a really good item. Uh, what did you get for winning the... What was the prize bo uh, brooch? That's pretty good, too. Well, that is an absolute shame. Why have Alto got their armies raised? War to remove Lord Hobart as regent. Regent of who? Oh, well. That's a very silly war. Oh, I could have got... I could have got... 150 prestige. That would have been fantastic. Maybe we should do our own grand tournament one day. That might be good for us. <laughs> Fighting in the dark, though. Uh, we'll get... Let's get 
uh, Captain Effectiveness up. That's a good one to have. And return to the shield tower. I wish having dragons meant that you returned quicker. Because, I mean, surely I could just use my dragon and just fly there and back. I mean, that's what Damon does. Just fly anywhere you want. <laughs> and you definitely would if you had the dragon. Just fly anywhere you needed to be. Right, now I've got a few years to try and get the golds to pay for the, <laughs> the grand wedding with Eleanor. We're going to save up anyway. Not that I could really buy anything. I think both here and Grimston are actually at max. Yeah. Lord Dickens Hunt. Let's take the risk of doing it without the... Yeah, let's go. I mean, hunting with the Tarleys is something that you can't really miss out on. You should absolutely do it. At the very least, I should use a dragon. I could use my dragon to get across the river. Who join me in the council meetings? Everyone loves those wise. Great little fella. There we go. Lord Corlys likes me now. We can maybe try and get Rhaenyra afterwards. Oh, interesting. My daughter Jane has finally turned three. She's new beyond the petty illnesses that rob so many of their infant children and has grown into a healthy toddler. Let's see. Let's get her... She's on diplomacy education, so... Curious, rowdy, bossy, charming, pensive. Now let's see if it's a fate. Bossy, okay. Interesting. I like leaving it to fate. I do think that's quite fun. No, I think, you know, his prowess sucks compared to mine. Like, nine, ba eight base versus... No, actually, he's the same as me? Oh, okay, well, can I take you as a squire? Doesn't seem like I can take him as a squire. Hmm. Oh, Unwin! Finally! After the last egg failed. Unwin has hatched his egg, and he's chosen the name Libag Limagon. Oh, well, will my children have eggs? Now I guess I better make more children. <laughs> Why can I not make him a squire? No possible knight exists in my court. Do I not have any knights at all in my court? No, Sir, Sir, Sir Lenwood is a knight. Is Tristan a knight? Tristan is not a knight. Ugh, this is the problem. I might have to ask Sir Lenwood then to, to raise him. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see if he will choose my uh, accept my son as a squire. Okay, he will. Because I was thinking about taking his title off him. But we'll do it when he dies. He can keep his title until he dies. And then we'll take Oak and Shield and um, make Grimston a vassal title. It might be good to just get a good relation with him. Because, I mean, his primary heir is, uh, like, a Hewitt anyway, right? Yeah, it's his grandson. Because I, <laughs> I burnt his son in battle. Whoops! It's not that they've actually got many in line at the title there anyway. We're seeking a stag near Horn Hill. I mean, the Tarleys are famous for their hunting. It's, it's, it almost feels like a, a requirement at some point as a reachman to go hunting with the Tarleys. You know, I want to make myself as known to as many of the gardener successors as possible. I think that's exactly the move you'd want to do as, as someone like Serwin. Like, get yourself in the middle of, of all of these houses. Make them know you well. Because we need to look at who could be a match for Unwin. In fact, if we take a look. If I just looked up Alliance Power. The Arbor! Or Ocean Road. Sterling in the Westerlands. Mainpool in the Riverlands. There are some good options here. Could, are there any high towers? Or 
Ooh, let's pin her because she could be a good option. Uh, Raylene Hightower, granddaughter of uh, Lord Hobart. That would be a fantastic match if we could get the high. I mean, if we get the high towers, we don't need anybody else. Ah, the hunt failed. But we can keep an eye on, I'd say the Tarleys would be good. Golden Grove would be great. If you could consider it. Mira Rowan. Yeah, there's, there's, there's options there. We need to keep our options open, but we need to keep our like we have our out of line, out of reach alliance now in um. You get an adventurous pet. Uh, we have our the core leases are out of region alliance. From now on, we need to focus on the rest of our alliances being um within the region. God, what is it with, with Aldrich? We just absolutely hate each other, it seems. You know what? I'm going to mutilate him before he leaves. I go off. A spy was discovered. Hmm. You can punish him or ro make him rot in a cell. I can't believe my septum was a spy. I'll put him in the cell. Gonna have to pick up a new Septum now. Oh, we have already given one automatically. Septum Normand of the Shield Islands. It's gonna cost 200 to host. Right, we're gonna have to switch to a sway scheme on our own bloody Septum. Get him on side. Hopefully my wife uh, may get pregnant again. Because if I were hoping for about five or six kids. The big one, obviously, is that we want Sapphire to lay another clutch, if possible. God, I have so many rivals. But if Sapphire can name it, lay another clutch, that'd be fantastic for us. Uh, let's actually put Notify when that becomes available. Just so that we can be sure that we're training Sapphire basically any any time we have an opportunity to. And pet my dog to get my stress down. Good stuff. The armies are still marching. What is going on in the Dark Dell? So it's a war against the Ocean Road for a claim of Wellowent. And the only ally he's got with him is uh, uh, House Selmy. I don't think the Dark Dells can win that unless they get another ally. They've married their, their kids to people who can't really help them. What's how sweet gonna do, you know? You've gotta be making sure that you're marrying them to useful people. Maybe you could marry Hayden away, get someone else in. They're lucky it seems like the Ocean Road is also having to fight off a um, peasant revolt. But I don't know, the numbers are just completely on their side here. They're just gonna be, keep chasing them down, one would imagine. Yeah, like look at that, it's 9,000 against 4,000 here. Not much of a chance. So is this a du jour war? Or is this a many league gone for claim? Yeah, it's an unpressed claim, so it's not du jour. Just a bit of an expansionist here in Oakenheart. Or Oakheart. And he's called the Black Oak, Lord Omer. Sadistic, forgiving, arrogant. Those two are interesting together. A skilled fighter too. He's one I'm very interested in. Very interested indeed. I'm gonna keep an eye on him. We could do with somebody in the region to um make enemies with, and he's a very interesting option. He's almost too much like me. That would cause aggression. Him being too much like me. So getting the Golden Grove on side or getting I mean the Golden Grove's super powerful, obviously getting the uh High towers on the side would be very, very useful for us at this point. Manderfield. And then a bunch of small towers here, which are all independent. The Westerland Sweats. This is a big one? No, it, it seems to just be spreading through um, 
uh, the Hornvale right now through House Brax. When it starts getting into Leopard and stuff, that's when I'll I'll be concerned. <laughs> it is very clearly spreading. Ooh, uh, she increased recruitment. Levy size plus 25. Not bad. Don't think we'll be going to war, though, is the thing. The only one I would really outnumber would be Darston. I, I guess I might as well... Alright, I can't get uh, claims through that method. I can't just force claims. I need to, to have actual reason to get claims. What we'll do at least is we'll monitor the situation here with Lord Oliver. Because the way uh, I want claims to work... Uh, so this is, I've, I've mentioned, the mod we're using is the mod that you guys can find in our multiplayer games. And we removed um, just getting claims, because it's not really a thing that happens in a Game of Thrones. Claims come a lot more, you know, naturally than that. And also because it removing it stops a lot of pointless wars that you end up seeing over, like, tiny provinces rather than duchy titles. Because the duchy titles can still be gained through other ways. Ooh, we'll take a look at this in a second. I want to finish my point first because I'm ADHD and I'll forget my point completely if I don't make it. Um, and I want to treat this as the story. This is my story game. I will give myself claims if I think there's been the story to set it up. And right now, I want to build a story against Black Oak. I, may, I think Darston would be a good place just to take for expansionist purposes, but I think Darston, like here in Ocean Road, this is where I want to make stuff known. Is there a way I could, like, send them an insult? A work detailing their incompetence. That'll do. <laughs> Just said the guy a letter calling him an absolute moron. The realm may be at peace now, but I know that it will not last forever. In a world such as this, it is only a matter of time before war comes to my doorstep. I must be prepared for such an eventuality, and I think Sapphire could help. In war, information is key, and when a war comes, we may not have time to gather it. I can get ahead of this problem, taking Sapphire out to chart my realm, aiding us in future conflicts. Of course, I could also focus on training Sapphire, ensuring our own competence in battle should the need arise. So then we get charted realm from Dragon back, which is a supply limit. Could, no, I think definitely the Dragon training here is a lot better because it gets combat effectiveness up. Like, we are up to... Oh no, it's on me that we can check it uh, here. Look at that, we're up to level 1 dragon training now. And obviously level 3 dragon bond. So that gets us 10% combat effectiveness for our beer dragon. And it gets me more natural dread. Very useful. Hmm. Is there anything else I can do to annoy him? It's interesting you can... Like, I forget you can... We have offer to join war. So if I wanted to, I could literally just offer to join the Dark Dells war here. I won't because his entire army's been wiped. And I didn't really want to do it anyway because I don't see a need to help the Virals. But next time he goes to a war... Like, I, I just think it's really useful to have as, like, a chance to offer to join someone's war to help them out and, and crush things. In fact, could we join your war, maybe? Because you're... It's, what are the numbers for you in this? Okay, no, you you have it pretty definitively. I'm going to say, because if you were struggling, I could have swooped in, helped you out, and then maybe gained favour. Although it may be good just to gain favour anyway, doing that. But do you have any one, any one to marry off? Rhonda. If I marry Rhonda to... It wouldn't get... No, it wouldn't get an alliance yet, though, because he's not the... He's not... I have to wait until Thaddeus actually takes the title for that to be the case. Might still be worth helping them out, though. Let's offer to help them. See if see if they want my help more than anything. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's more of a... I do automatically, I guess. Oh, but it's going to cost... Ugh, I always forget that I have to pay the cost to land my army. And my army costs money to keep up. You know what? I'll say I'll, I will help, but uh, we're, my soldiers are actually just going to stand back down. <laughs> Look, i got to save up for this royal wedding, okay? But it's good to know that that, that feature is working as intended. And I, um... Oh, some of these are admin stuff, or 
stuff that I use when I need to make edits and the like. So obviously I'm not going to use a create line stuff because that does also force it. But it's good that I can basically join wars when I think I need to be in the wars, which I think just makes perfect sense to me. I think it's a feature that works and it's great to have in a single player mod like this, being able to step in and help things out. And uh, again, if you want to join us and try this mod out in multiplayer, come join our game. In fact, you're a fool for not doing it already, if you ask me. Like, just check the description. You can join us. Join, uh... I mean, we've got so much roleplay going on in this in this uh, pre-week. In fact, when you guys are, are seeing this, we would have had our first session. So I'm hopeful it would have gone great. In fact, no, we... Sorry. <laughs> That's me thinking uh, too far ahead. No, we will be having our first session. Sorry. Uh, we won't have had our first session yet when this video goes out. Uh, it will be the Saturday after. So sort of this week is your, your, your best chance to join if you want to get in for the, the starting roleplay. Join us this week. We're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm hoping to see a lot of you guys in there. Oh, I would have thought he would have got a bit higher, honestly, with, with all the traits and stats he had, than just thrifty clerk. I guess we could send him to university uh, when he's a bit older and we saved up a bit. But he's he's being trained. He's being trained in the night. He's got up to sixteen prowess, skilled fighter. Like he's not bad. He's definitely not bad. I mean, what, am I a skilled fighter? No, I'm a formidable. So he's a. I'm a better base fighter than he ever was. But um, there's a lot of potential in him to be a lot like a bottomless pit. I'm referring financial reports every when I notice one particularly large item. Dragon food. Twice again in the number it was last year. After acquiring with my staff, I learned that Hagon has been eating more and more. Or uh, Hegagon has been eating more and more. Violently complaining that it was not given what it wants. So it could get voracious. Uh, changing a dress person like this could cause loose temperance or taming chance. It'll gain restraint. Or could also give him aggressive. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I want Lion. I think it'll be fun if the dragon is the exact opposite of Lionel. Aggressive and voracious, bonded with honest and chaste. <laughs> well, oh, this has remained completely within the Hornvale here, this sickness. It's quite interesting. And now we have a new one forming up in Orchard Way here. Cold note's gonna get absolutely destroyed here. <laughs> He's the only vassal, really, who held any sort of land that wasn't a Rowan. And now he's gonna lose basically all his titles. So, not good news for him. God, my scepter just refuses to be swayed. I think that's his third or fourth time in a row that he just says, No, I'm not swayed, actually. I hate you. Raylan's still not of age, but it doesn't really matter because Ormond isn't the Lord yet, so it doesn't fully matter. Um, so we're not going to get an alliance there. Make our service of age, though. A bit fat, too. Riding on Dreamfire. Hmm. Oh, no, she's married off. Okay. Limited options for Unwin if we wanted the alliance right now. But if we're patient. If we're patient, I think we've got a lot of chance. Although there's not a lot wrong with the Arbor, to be fair. The only problem with the Arbor would be getting to us, as they'd have to go the long way. But honestly, we're both... We are both islands. Maybe it might be the right match for Unwin. And then maybe we save Jane for one of the others. I just don't want Unwin to go too long without a bride. And she is uh, older, right? Hmm. 
Wait, how is she? Oh, it's... That's just a good question. It's, um... His sibling? Yeah, his sibling Jocelyn. Okay. That's good to know. Knowing it's a sibling actually makes that less ideal, because it means that when Hoba dies, that alliance comes to an end, because aunts don't matter for alliances, but mothers or... But um, siblings do, I mean. So, when you marry a child, uh, you know, when you marry the daughter to a, your son, that's two generations both ways of an alliance, which is far more useful. Bullshit Random Rise has given rise to the peasant rabble. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. The sickness is starting to spread to them as well. This is a really bad one. The Reach has had a, quite a few plagues already, and this might be one of the worst ones here in Orchard Way. Goldman keeps fighting. I would just surrender if I were him. <laughs> but he's going to keep fighting. Selmy's getting beaten down pretty hard here as well. I mean, this war's over. Surprised they haven't pieced out already. Max battles won. War score from holding. And he holds the objective. I can't see much reason to keep fighting if I was him. Okay, my son's actually making good progress. I was about to say, I hope he's making progress. And he is. Excuse me, do I have another knight? Because, you know, maybe I could send... Because Corley is a knight, right? No, he... Oh, no, he is one. I was going to say, he definitely has a trait of one. Would he train Unwin? He would. Let's send Unwin away. To, to Dragonstone. Oh, sorry, to uh, Driftmark. Get him trained uh, in High Tide. That'd be really good for him, I think. And you know what? We'll, we'll call it there for this episode. We sort of really strongly secured our ties here with uh, Lord Corlys uh, and Rhaenys. We have, we have not only married... I mean, we're currently their only alliance, which is wild. Uh, we have married off their... Uh, uh, our young Lionel to them. And uh, only only four years before that's going to be uh, triggered. Lionel, I want to just say, I'm very interested to get to play him. I mean, with these sort of traits. Lionel is a very interesting character. I mean, he's already 16, so he could already have an impact on what we do with the story. Especially with a, a dragon, now three years old. But uh, Unwin's going to be very interesting, because his... Uh, oh, sorry, Jane will be very interesting, because her dragon is basically her age. So she grows, her dragon's going to grow. She could be a proper warrior soon. But we've now sent our dear son on Unwin, our second born, off to be trained by Lord Corlys. So I think there's a very good chance that he could make some good ties here in Driftmark and get our name known. But with Ray with us now meeting Rhaenyra at that tourney, meeting and marrying Corlys, there is no way that the king doesn't know about us now. But uh, what I wonder is how the king, or more rather, how his hand of the king, Lord Otto Hightower. Or Sir Otto Hightower is going to react to us. I mean, we're a threat, aren't we? Four dragons now live in the Shield Tower and on Cliffs High. And those are some serious threats, especially Sapphire proving herself to be a very notable dragon. And who knows, there could be another litter in her future. And that we have us now making him as an intentional enemy here in the Black Oak. There's quite a lot for us to keep our eyes on. But that is what we will call it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. In fact, while well, ask for the next episode, who should we look to marry? Should we go for the Arbor? Try and work our way in here with the Rowans? Make our way with Hightower? Or perhaps maybe Tarly or one of the others would be a good match. Who do you think? Leave your answers in the comment below and I will... Pick my favourites and <laughs> arguments and we will get our story ready. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode. Until then.